Hey everyone, this is David Stone and welcome to today's video. This is probably one of the longest video I have ever made, but this is basically how you set up a Shopify store from scratch, where I go through the whole process of setting up a uh, design, uh, legal pages, your settings and how to import your products and you know a lot of this you can see on other videos but I will also be uh, giving my personal input and why I do the things that I do. We'll also be going through how you can set up your pixel, your analytics and also how you import your website to the uh, Google console basically for a better ranking on your store. Uh, so this is a very beginner friendly video if you have any other questions then how to set up your store leave them down below and I'll answer them as fast as I can in the link below I'll be leaving a, a link to Shopify you just click that and you get to this page and here you can just enter your email address and you'll get a 14 day trial now you probably found this in a lot of other videos but please use the link below and set up a new store under my under my link I really appreciate it and you know it really shows support for the time amount of time that I spent on these videos I spent about four hours yesterday trying to record this video over and over but my video file kept getting corrupt and I just wasn't happy with the quality of that video so I'm redoing it all over now but anyways I don't want to waste any more time let's get right into this so you get to this page with the link in the description below and you enter your email address and you get started from there they want you to enter your address and stuff like that just enter it all correctly and make sure that you're not lying very important to do that since you will be getting some couple of refunds here and there in the future when you start selling and then you want to have your real business address on that and then you'll be asked to set up your store name but before we can do that we really want to find our product and now I have a video on how you can find the best products to sell in 2019 it's the last video before this video so go check that out if you haven't but I'm not really gonna go through product research all too much in this video but you can check that video out before you watch this you'll see a notification in the top right corner right now where you can click that and you'll get to that video and you can just continue this one so in the video I go through the best method and the best method for me is Ecom Hunt. That's what I prefer to use to choose my products. I leave a link in the description below for that. They have a free plan and you can see a lot of products with that. There's some features that are limited but don't worry about it. Anyway, so this is the product that I chose. It solves a product and it has a mass appeal because a lot of people want their skin to be clean and wrinkle free. So as you can see, it's an anti-wrinkle electric massaging cream. You get the description for it, even if the description right now is quite bad. I'll be rewriting that a little bit if I were to sell it, but we will be using this as an example for this video. You also get your product cost and profit margin for all the products that you choose and also the saturation inspector to see how many stores are currently selling this product. As you can see, this product is quite saturated, but that doesn't really matter in this video. But if I were to sell, I wouldn't really hesitate if it was sat saturated because I know I can make this store look better and uh, I know I can make this store look better than 95% of the other people selling this product. You also get the links to AliExpress and also analytics and a little bit of targeting for Facebook ads and also some Instagram influencers. So if you want to jump on this product, you can do that as well. But I recommend you finding your own product with Ecom Hunt. They have a free plan and that is good as well. The product we chose was Anti-Wrinkle Electric Massaging Cream. So I made my store and named it to Anti-Wrinkle King. It's quite a generic name, but you know, it, it's quite catchy and I like it. What I like to do when I first get into my admin or my dashboard is I like to start from the bottom to the top. So I go through all my settings before I start doing my design, my apps and uh, before you start out with everything on here, you want to go into Gmail or anything else, any platform that you prefer. But I like to use Gmail and you set up your your account there and you name it to the store name. Don't, don't do anything else like a name or anything. Name it to your store name. So anti-wrinkle king for me, anti-wrinkle king at gmail.com. So once that is done, we jump into settings and we start with general. So here you'll just write in your store address and your store details, but that is mostly done by default when once you set up your store. But there's two things that I like to point out before you skip this uh, this setting is that you add a prefix and suffix to your orders. That is because you don't want your customers to see the default one, which is just a hashtag and they see hashtag 1001 and that basically shows the customer <laughs> 
pretty easily that they were the first one to order and that looks quite bad and they might get scared that your store isn't real so so they'll ask for a refund so make sure you add some random shit into your prefix and suffix i like to add uh, at the end the current year that i'm selling in so for this year uh 2019 is coming up so i like to add 19 to that and store currency if you registered from uh, let's say like i did in sweden uh, then you want to go and change the currency to whatever you're selling to but i like to always use usd because that looks the most clean you can always implement an automatic currency exchanger uh, later on but for now just put that to us dollars that is done now we jump into the next one which is payment providers so payment providers uh, for some countries you won't have stripe but for anyone that has stripe always use stripe they are by far the best company to work with when having a credit card payment uh, processor and you always want to add your paypal so before you add your paypal always create a new paypal with your store email you don't have to do this if you have a business PayPal, but in the beginning, I, I don't really see you having a business PayPal. But before you start selling, this is very important. You need to verify that PayPal because otherwise you might get limited when you start getting you start getting a lot of orders. And that would just suck because if they limit you, your funds might get frozen in that account. And you don't really want that. You want to be able to pay for everything. So before you set up PayPal here and start selling, Verify your PayPal, it's very easy and you won't be getting limited. Once you start getting a lot of orders, you want to open a business in your country and open up a business PayPal account instead. But that is for another video and it's not really important right now since you're just starting out. For the other payment methods, use Stripe. If you don't have Stripe available, just search on Google for alternatives to Stripe. Amazon Pay is always good. The more payment options you have, the more conversion rate you're gonna have as well because people trust Amazon a lot. It's one of the, it is the biggest uh, store online to date. It's known worldwide as well. Get Amazon Pay if you want to, you don't have to. Alternative payments would be like uh, BitPay, which uh, I like to have on some of my stores actually because people do do like to pay with Bitcoin sometimes. And Bitcoin is, it's just another way of you to get another sale because you might have missed out if they didn't see you accept Bitcoin. So add that if you want to, but that is for another video. This is also important, payment authorization. By default, that is put to manually, but you want to automatically capture your payment for orders. So you don't have to go through 30, 40, 50 orders like I did and had to capture those payments manually. But anyway, let's jump into checkout. This is probably one of the most important tabs in the settings. So you wanna set your settings to just what I have. So accounts are optional because you don't wanna force your users to have an account, but you, I don't want to disable it either because you wanna have some customer accounts so you can get more emails, for example, or you can also reach out and give the customers who have an account set up some bonuses for your website. Make them feel special. Uh, to check out, customers can check out you using either phone number or email. You know, the, the more options you have for your customer, the more you are going to sell. So to receive shipping updates, customer can add a phone number or email. That is also very important. You want to require first and last name because if you only <laughs> require the last name, the supplier won't really know where to ship your product. So don't forget to edit that. Company name, I like to hide that. There's no point because you're not really offering any company specials, but you can do that in the future as well. Address line two doesn't matter at all because the supplier will always ship to the address line one. Shipping address phone number, optional as well. And while the customer is checking out tab, use the shipping address as billing address by default. That is, you know, it's optional, but I would recommend having that. Uh, and enable address auto completion. Now this is an, a feature which Shopify didn't implement all too long ago, but that would basically just show uh, address suggestions when they start writing in their address and makes the checkout process way shorter. So the shorter your checkout process is, the more you are going to sell and convert. After an order has been paid, do not automatically fulfill any of the order's line items. That is very important because you don't want to fulfill an order before you send out their tracking number basically but you do however want to automatically archive the order once it's fulfilled and paid so you don't have them popping up with a number here up here 
Additional scripts, here's where you can add a conversion hack. I will go through this in another video, but for now you can skip this and not enter anything right now. Show a sign up option and pre-select the sign up option. This won't be ticked by default, but tick that and you should be all good to go. This so you can, you're basically allowed to send out emails to the people who who check out or just abandon their order with an email and put it into your website. Checkout language should always be English in my opinion, but if you're send, if you're selling to a specific targeted country that is not English speaking, go for that language, but I always sell to English speaking countries. So anyway, jumping right into the next one is shipping. So by default, that shipping address will be, uh, uh, for me, that is Sweden because I live in Sweden. But you, you want to edit that and just remove that completely because you don't want a domestic shipping really. But that depends if, on your product as well. But what I like to do is I like to add worldwide shipping and then I include all the countries in the world. Alright, so from the start you include all the countries in the world except maybe some African countries I guess. So you just go to add countries and you click in uh, the top top corner for everything. So that would be... Europe for example you can untick everyone and you can and you can take everything as well so you add that and you have worldwide shipping all right that is important because even if you don't plan on selling to a lot of countries you can always see which countries your shipping rates are very costly for so if you get an order for from like let's say uh, Ayland Islands I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right and you see that the shipping rate is like 30 bucks to get there. And then you can just email the customer and say, sorry, we did not ship to your country. We're extremely sorry for the inconvenience, but here is a refund and you refund them the whole amount. And then you just remove that country altogether from that shipping list. And then you know in the future that that country is not shippable and the people who come from that country won't really be able to buy from your store. But that opens up a lot of options for you because then you can target down a lot of countries which you sell to and which not, and, but you won't be limited. So you won't only be selling to United States or European countries because some countries really convert a lot and then you can start targeting them with ad in that specific country and you might have hit the golden jackpot for your product in that country. You know, I know a lot of uh, Turkish countries love skincare products, for example, so anti-wrinkle king might actually be a hit over there. But if you wouldn't have tried this method before, then you wouldn't have known. But anyway, jumping into the, the rates of your shipping. So from the beginning, your shipping rates will be over here in weight based rates i like to remove those completely and have my shipping rates based on price now we won't be going on with a free plus shipping model in this video because i'm not really a fan of it i don't really like free plus shipping all that much i've had a, some success with it and but mostly I'm, i just preferred this model from the beginning so we have free worldwide shipping that is always good to have because that increases your conversion rate by a ton don't leave out free plus shipping. If you have a very high ticket item, then free shipping might be something that you might not want to consider. One thing I like to do about from all my stores is add priority shipping and handling. So I can I can make this rate like one dollar to ten. The lower you have it, the more people are gonna use it. But that is basically a hundred percent free profit and pure. So what you want to do though is in your shipping pages, which I will be going over in this video. You want to write that priority shipping and handling is just extra careful handling of your package and does not include faster shipping because you will always be using e-package shipping when you you use uh, when you drop ship via AliExpress for example and suppliers but this opens up an option for you to get 100% pure free profit it might be a little bit scummy but really it's business and you want to have as much profit as possible and 4.95 dollars extra on 60% of orders is quite a lot and you will have a ton of margins to use for ads and stuff like that. So if you want to have this, just add it to your site. But remember to add in your terms of service or shipping information that priority shipping and handling does not include faster shipping. It is just made to package and ship out your order before anyone else's who ordered via free worldwide shipping instead. Oh right, I forgot to mention how you add a shipping rate. So this is the shipping rate and minimum order price. This is basically if you have people buying like three or four of four in quantity of a product, you can add so they have to pay shipping for that. But 
really that it's not necessary the simpler you make this store the more you are going to sell like before having a ton of like social proof and scarcity timers and stuff like that it, it's sold but nowadays people get turned off by that it, it will still work for some stores like general stores for example but for a one product branded store like this is what we're setting up a one product or a couple of products in the same related niche to sell as a branded store this is the whole idea of this store so if you're out for something else uh, you can just click down this video because this is not really what i'm going through but you will find a lot of valuable information from all of this but anyway, we're jumping right into the next uh, thing. You can skip taxes for now, but once you start selling more, you can include taxes. One thing I like to do though is go into tax and I take away that I won't charge tax on products because that makes it so on the checkout page and in your cart page of a store when, when someone adds a product, they won't see. So this is the total price including taxes. The thing about people who buy is that, that they might be quite stupid sometimes and they see they see this line that it includes taxes and they're like whoa do i have to pay more just because of taxes even if they don't understand that that is excluding taxes and not including taxes some people just will be put off by that and you want to have this as simple as po possible and have the customer feel safe and not get confused during checkout process that is what a lot of people don't understand the simpler you have it the more you're gonna sell so take off taxes for now, but once you set up a legal business, you can start including taxes because then, by then, your store will already be known within that world of uh, category of products, basically. So locations, you can uh, skip locations because you don't have a physical warehouse to sell. Notifications, you can also skip for now because we'll be, we will be using an app for all of those notifications. So files is very important because I like to bookmark this tab so I can easily upload a lot of pictures in bulk and I don't have to then go into uh, edit my code and go into the assets file and add those manually one by one. And this is basically a way for you to find all of those uh, images and link them into your uh, blog post article. Very easy to do. So bookmark that is it's an important page. So sales channels. Uh, this is quite good to go over, but I won't be going over how you can set up all of these up But basically you just go to add sales channels You can also do that via the plus sign over here and what I always do is I add Facebook and I add Instagram But from the beginning you won't have a description or for your products or anything like that So your Facebook integration won't be accepted by Facebook because you need a description before they add your products to your Facebook page uh, but what you want to do is you create an Instagram page for your store and you create a Facebook page for your store And once you have your store set up You can start adding these sales channels because they will help a lot once you start running targeted ads to the people that you want to uh, Want to buy from you But for now you can skip out on these but I recommend adding them once your store is set up at the end of this video So next up is account you won't really be doing a lot here right now So you can skip that billing is important so for the billing you want to add your credit card add your credit card the moment like you start your store because adding your credit card makes makes it so you can start installing apps and you can start paying for your plan the thing about Shopify plan is even if you start your plan in your trial your trial will run for 14 days and after one month and then you will pay your Shopify store plan so you won't be doing that in the beginning so don't worry about it but add your credit card so you can install apps and pay your plan or start your plan at least uh, here you can see your your account summary basically how much you paid for apps and how much you paid for your store plan this is very important as well because you want to keep track track of how much you're paying each month for everything uh, but we will be going through a super good app that you can use to track all of this within one place without having to calculate a lot of things by your own. Now we get to the legal side of the settings and this page is probably one of the most important as well because you want to set up legal pages for your store. Without legal pages, uh, Google will notice that and you won't get ranked in Google. It offers great SEO value as well because you have the 
the terms uh, of service and refund policy and privacy policy, all of that. And that includes your your store name as well. And, and that basically acts as an article on your store. I also have a few recommendations that you can do this outside of Shopify. I will leave a Google document in the description below where I basically list a lot of useful links where you can generate a refund policy, privacy policy and terms of service and also an about us page uh, for all of your customers. Very important, but basically you want to go and copy this and you go into online store here. Don't, then you go into pages and you add a page. And as this was, it was a refund policy. So, and then you just, uh, so you press control, uh, you control A to, to uh, select everything and control C. I don't know what it is on Mac, but control C to copy that. And then you press control V to paste that. Now, important thing to add about the edit website SEO. So here you want to add a strike or a dash or whatever. Uh, I like to add this, uh, this line. I don't know what it's called because I'm Swedish. And then I write in my, uh, my store name basically. So anti wrinkle king. Now what this is going to do is that Google is going to snap up on your store uh, name basically popping up on all of your uh, website and that just adds to your SEO value a lot There's no point for you to not do this and you're stru basically structuring your uh, Your titles on Google. So once you submit your sitemap to Google, which we will do in Google search console later on uh, It will basically just uh, create a good tree under your main store link and it will link to all of these important pages and it will include your uh, store name on all of those links. I know I'm, I'm quite bad at explaining why you should do this but just, trust me, just do it because it will help your store SEO by a lot. I will go over store SEO which is uh, search engine optimization in a whole nother video because that is quite for advanced users but for now just take my advice and do this and press save. Now I already have my pages set up, but what you want to do is just go in, copy paste all of this into new pages like I have here. Now I have two refund policies because I tried to record this video for like four or six hours yesterday and it didn't go very well. So what I will be leaving in the description below is the templates that I use for about us, facts and shipping information. Now all of these pages are going to help you a ton with SEO on your store and it's very important to have these kind of things on your store so the customer can get an answer to every question they might have about your business. If you don't include this, you're basically just neglecting yourself a better conversion rate and a better store value overall and a lot of SEO value. What it looks like, I'll open all of these uh, now so you can check them out. But basically what these are, it's shipping policy and terms. This is just so your information can get a general idea of how long that shipping is going to take. And also ab about your processing uh, days. And also here's where you want to add that you're having a priority shipping and handling and what that actually is. So you can always send the customer this page to read about that if they have any questions of why the shipping is taking so long when they had priority shipping and handling. So it's the same thing here. You want to add that, as I said here, anti uh, wrinkle king, but you want to have that as your store name, of course. So you have that and you save it. And here is the fax. So fax is important because that increases your conversion rate by a lot. It's basically a lot of questions, which I find is the most common ones that people ask when you tend when you drop ship. Uh, so I'll be leaving all of this in the description below. All I need you to do to get that is send me your email so I can notify you of all new videos. Now I won't be selling you anything. I will just be, be providing you with pure value. And if you're not ready to give your email up for that, then I, I'll just leave an extra link in the description below so you, can, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I'm not really going to force you to do anything. If you don't want to give me your email, that is completely fine by me. You can have it. Anyway, so about us page. This is one of the pages that about 30% of your customers are going to click on if they see that you have an about us page. So make sure you write something really catchy and a great story about your, your store so the customer can read like, oh, we came from the uh, Amazon forest and we created this awesome product just with all natural herbs and shit like that. And make it as catchy as possible. Keep it to 250 and 500 words, uh, no less, no more because you don't want it to be all too long. But an about us page is important as 
hell. Take my word for it. And all, what you can do as well is you can hire a writer to write these things for you. So you just invest like five bucks and they will write everything everything like this including your uh, product description for a uh, five bucks and that is very good if you suck at writing don't try and do it too much like don't waste your time on it invest those five bucks and get over that obstacle the faster you can get over obstacles and finally start working on ads and influencer promotions the more you're gonna sell and the faster you're gonna get into shopify oh also one thing i want to mention is that why we're creating a one type product store is because the learning curve of creating a one product type store is way easier and way faster if you're gonna create a general store you will have 20 products and you'll have to do everything manually and it's gonna take you a couple of weeks to get that running you won't even know what product to start promoting before you before you like get sunk into stress and you don't know what the hell you're doing and you gotta give up because you got into too much products at once general stores are for advanced users with a lot of budget there are some cases where people have had success but with a one product type store, your learning curve is gonna be fast as hell. And then you can start working on that general store after you actually learned how to sell because that is the most important part of this video. You wanna learn how to sell and how to set up your store and how you can set up that fast in the future because once you have a theme, you can just export that theme and use it on all your next stores. And you need to just replace your logo and stuff like that. Let's get right into the next part. So in the description below, take my templates. I'll give them for your email or for free. You can decide whichever you want, but I would really love if you gave me your email so I can send you out when I upload my videos. I really want this to blow up and that is the plan. Anyway, so next in line is our theme. And this is something that a lot of people are put off by, but trust me, store design is one of the most simple aspects of having a store. So for the free theme, I like to use the debut team. No other, I don't like Brooklyn. No, I'm not like other gurus. Brooklyn looks like shit in my eyes because it's basically a way for people to just dump out trash and sell it to stupid people. No, that is not our plan. We want to create a branded store and debut is the best theme for that in my opinion, all right? That's my opinion. We're going to go with the theme debut. It's a free theme, but of course a paid theme is going to convert better in some cases. But actually these themes are so optimized and so fast at loading, like your page loading speed is way more important than the design of your theme. So we'll start out with the logo and header. So I like to keep my logo centered because that looks way more clean. All right, but first we'll need a logo. So I'm just gonna go into Photoshop and create one really fast. But what you can do is you can use any other online web design tool and that would be like Pixlr or Canva or anything like that. It's very simple to use, but I feel that Photoshop is my preferred tool to use when I do this. So I'll just use my uh, one of my favorite fonts, which is Big Noodle Titan and Anti Wrinkle King. We'll just put that in there and so now we just want a crown as well to make that look like a kingly image. So we'll take that, save it. And I'm just gonna drag that into Photoshop. And we'll add that. So I don't really like the way it's looking right now. So we'll remove that part. Now, of course, you can make a very simple type. Now, of course, you can make a very simple logo. This is a very simple logo, but it's look, it looks quite clean if you ask me. So we'll just save that and go back into our store and add that to the logo. And we'll add that to our store. Now that looks pretty clean to me. And for the main menu, I did not mention that I'm incredibly sorry so once you created your pages you want to go into navigation and create your main menu and your footer menu so you go into main menu and you add all the pages that you created except your legal pages now you want to add your about us page your facts your shipping information and also a uh, link to your product because this will all be included in your sitemap and will basically improve your seo so the more interlinking that you have with all your products for example the more you're gonna rank and the more you're gonna sell as well because the easier access your pro your customer has to your product and they see your product name everywhere the more they're gonna be tempted to buy it so add your product in your menu and you can just remove catalog if you want to because I, we're not gonna really sell a lot of products 
But here is also where you're gonna add your shipping app, but that is for later. So for your further menu, I like to add uh, the refund policy, the privacy policy, and your and your terms of service, and save that menu. But also, oh, also I forgot, you need to add your shipping information page because that is also good to have. It's all the informational menus that you have. Add that into your footer. Don't keep that in the main menu, keep that in your footer. All right, so for your uh, homepage, you know, you can always, always include a, an announce. For this video, we're gonna include one. So for this video, I chose the product color blue. Now, why I chose this is because I like to read about color psychology. So blue it conveys feelings of trust, peace, and productivity. And I don't know, that is fits the store a lot, but you know, I'll link this, uh, this page in the description below where it basically shows you which colors are the best colors to use for your sort of product. But for this video, I'm going with blue. And up here in the announcement, you can just add a uh, free shipping world worldwide today that is simple very simple and put the announcement bar link to be your product so the customers can easily get to that product from any from any page on your store now for this slider we're not gonna do a lot but I recommend making a very clean slider image and including a great selling point of your product like a 50% discount that you're having or something like that and then we go to select images and just push that out there but for this video I'm gonna use a free stock photo which I find is uh, clean now I don't recommend you using you can use a stock photo but I really people have seen that a ton of times and a lot of people just are lazy so they pick a stock photo don't do that go and make a photo with Canva or anything for the image settings I think that is like 2440 pixels by 1080 I'm not sure but I think that is it now, for the heading of your uh, slider, I like to put my store name, so Anti Wrinkle King. And in here, you have a good selling point, so 50% off today only. And for your button, you always want to have a button. If you don't have a button here, you can always add one to your image, so it, you can customize it the way you want it to look. But for this video, I'm gonna add a button and here we have explore. Now, I don't recommend you putting buy now. It just puts your customers off because I don't think you would buy something. If someone came up to your face and were like, buy this, buy this, buy this, then you wouldn't really buy that product because you would be thinking, wait, what is this product even? Add your button with it, which should be explore. I like to put explore. You can use anything else like uh, check out now or uh, more information, stuff like that. So next thing I like to do is go into my colors and I change all the colors to a universal color theme. So don't put 50 freaking colors on your store. It looks like shit and you won't be selling anything. You might get a few sales here and there, but the, uh, like your conversion rate must be down to shitter really. So for the sale price, I'll always use the red sale price because it conveys um, stress and you need to check out now. It's, it's basically a psychology thing. So where you, you the user sees the red color and they're like, holy shit, I need to buy this now. And you already know this because you are experiencing exactly that every freaking day of your life. So for and everything else, for all the primary colors, I will be using blue. And for the body text, I always use a grayscale dark and for headings and links, I use the darkest, uh, well, completely black. And oh, like the debut the theme has a very nasty, like uh, blue kind of uh, text color. So just change that to your liking. For borders, I like to have blue as well. You basically just have to play around with your design, but this is how I like to set up my design. Borders and lines, blue. So once that is done, we go into typography. So, so this is where I see a lot of people make big mistakes. They pick a font which is completely shit and looks like real shit on your store. Like, who the hell is gonna read this? And, and now this is might take this to a little bit far, but I, I've actually seen stores using fonts who which look like this. Like, can you even read that this says explore? The fonts that I like, Roboto Condensed for my headings and buttons, and for my body text, I like to use the 
Roboto regular. So this is the regular Roboto. And that, is, that looks pretty slick, but I like to increase my size as well. And bold product titles. Very important. It just looks way cleaner and it, your product stands out. So from this, it's already looking quite good. Now, of course, we're gonna uh, edit the main section. And I haven't gone through how you can add your product to your store yet. But don't worry, we'll be going through that. But I'm just going through from the bottom to the top in the uh, Shopify admin. So you can get a whole overall understanding. This is what it's gonna look like once you have your product implemented, but not like this. I don't wanna have a feature collection because we're selling one product with upsells and cross sells. So we'll, we will be selling something related to this product so we can cross sell that to the customer who is buying from us. So I really like to remove this completely and I add a featured product instead because that just looks way more clean and I add my product and voila. Holy moly, that looks slick. Of course, you're gonna have a variant label if you have variants, but if you don't have variants, remove that and show quantity selector because you wanna have so that customers can buy more than just one. Now, image zoom, if you have something that is supposed, that, that is something that a customer needs to look closer at, have that enabled, but for this product, it's not necessary. So show dynamic checkout button. I like to always have this on because it just makes the checkout process easier. The easier you have your checkout process, the easier you're gonna make, get sales. Uh, but you can split test this. So all, if you're getting a lot of traffic and you're, you see a little bit dip in your sales, you can take this off and you'll see because this looks clean all as well. But I like to have my dynamic checkout button because it's just a simpler way for people to buy my products faster. Now for my social sharing buttons, I like to take that off. There's not a lot of times where people are going to share your product anyway. Take that off and rely on getting shares from your product ads later on. We drag that up so it's right below our slider. And looking like this, at this, it's looking quite slick already. But remember that you are optimizing this for mobile. Do not optimize for desktop. It's that's not what you want to do. You want to optimize for mobile because about 90% of your traffic is going to be mobile always. That is just the world we live in nowadays. So keep that to mobile. Always check how the mobile version looks. Do not use the desktop version to see if it looks good or not. The mobile version is a priority. So below my featured product, I like to add images with text. So first image with text is going to be uh, just something random about your product. So I already have some pro uh, product pictures selected out here. Uh, once you implement your product via Oberlo, which I will go through in the app section of this video, you're gonna understand completely what I mean by this. But for now, just take this advice into mind and you can come back to this once you know how to implement a product. But I bet you've seen a lot of videos on how to set up a Shopify store before. So you probably know already what to do here. If we're gonna implement for a desktop version, this won't really show on the mobile version, but for the desktop version, you always wanna have it uh, looking good there as well. So you don't just optimize for mobile version because mobile version always looks same however you do it. But for desktop version, I like to add one left image and then you write some a good tagline. So 50% off today. And then you have a product label saying buy now and link that to your product. Of course, you want to have a lot more information here below your product. So just write about your product, find information or just come up with information about your product and put that in there. And once that is done, we go into add section and we add image with text once again. But this time we're going to align it to the right side. And then we add uh, explore the world of wrinkles. I, uh, I'm, I don't have any clue why I said that, but explore the world of wrinkle free wrinkles something just write about your product and buy now again and put products anti wrinkle king now i know i said before that you shouldn't have like push your customer into buying 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 but that is not the case here because they have already gone below the product and they read about the product probably in the description and they just want more information about it you want to go down and here you write information about your product that you is specific selling points about your product and once they see that they might want to buy it after that so you always have a buying button handy so they can use that whenever so the bottom slideshow not really important 
So for the next image, I, I'm just going to use a, another image that I found, which is this one. And as you can see, it looks quite good actually already. But re please remember that you should always write about your product. So what I like to add below that is a testimonial page. So testimonials are very important. You can just come up with a testimonial if you want to. But once you get real testimonials, make sure you add them and update your design accordingly. But it's always good to have testimonials of people using your product. And here you can also include images or links to that specific review or testimonial. Uh, but I would I would recommend you to rename this to uh, reviews instead of testimonials because testimonials just just doesn't sound as good as reviews. And in the bottom we add a newsletter. It's always good to get some random emails because I know I, there's always some random people who sign up to my email list at the end. So as you can see in the quick links here, you have the, the most important parts, but you also want to go into your footer here and edit the quick links to main menu and change that to the main menu as well. So every all of this is included on your sitemap. Talking about your business, here you can make a short version of the About Us page that I will be linking in the description below, so you can use that for yourself. But please make sure that you edit those pages to your own store, so it's not it's not just my text because that won't work for you. Uh, newsletter, you don't really have to touch that all too much because that is not the most important aspect of your store. We're gonna have this selling. So if you take a look now. This store is ready to sell. I would be able to sell with this store, like currently how as it is. If I edit all the text, of course, then I would be able to sell. That is how we set up our store design and we do that as fast as possible. There's two things more that we need to add and that is a favicon that should be 32 by 32 pixels. Not very hard to do. Go into Canva or Photoshop or whatever image editing tool that you use and just write your initials of your store. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that really doesn't like for example you could also take uh, if you have a king store you can have a crown or something and put that into your favicon and favicon is basically the little small logo that you see on your page tab at the top check out check out page very important to edit as well i like to put my logo position in in the center and i make, like to make that large so that is the focus of attention and for the main content area keep that white but for your order summary, you want that bit to stand out a little bit. So you edit that and make that a little bit darker than white. And for your headings and base text, uh, I always use Roboto. It's just the most clean font on Shopify. And for my accents, you want to make that into your universal color. So for this one, it's the blue that I used. Great. And now your Shopify checkout process is clean as and it will look great. So now the design part is over with and now we can jump straight into our apps. So the first app that you're going to install is Oberlo. If for now, Oberlo is your main app to go to. There are some alternatives out there like Dropify and uh, uh, Quick uh, AliExpress something. Uh, but Oberlo is always going to be my main main app. So let's go and in, jump into Oberlo and see what we can do there. So as you can see, I already imported my product, but I'll go back to Ecom Hunt here and go into the AliExpress site. So once you have Oberlo, you want to go to Google and search for the Oberlo extension and download that from the Chrome store. Very easy to do. And once you do that, you'll get Oberlo up in your add-ons tab. And it basically looks like this. This is the Oberlo tab. And once you have that here and you find the product that you wanted to use from, let's say, Ecom Hunt or my video on how to find the best products to sell in 2019, which you can see in the top right corner right now, then this is for you. So you add that and then it's added to your import list. That basically imports your whole product with all the images and variants and descriptions and all that. But you want to overwrite everything here. So you change your title to anti wrinkle king or whatever you're, you're calling your, your product. Now one important part of making a branded store, you want to make your product branded as well. So you want to add your trademark logo, which you can find on Google when you just search trademark symbol. You want to add that to the end of your product. I won't be doing it now because I already did 
when you have it like this, you do not want to add any collections or tags or a type or anything like that. Don't remove the description just yet because you can use that to get inspiration on what to write. But for the variants, just change your price to whatever you're pricing it. I like to price my products at a 65% profit margin. And you can use uh, you can just search on Google for a Shopify profit margin calculator where you, you can calculate markup of your product. Uh, but I'll leave a link to that in the description below so you can check that out as well. And that is very simple. There's no sign up or anything needed. You can just put in your price and your preferred price and it will calculate your profit margin based on that. Now for your compare that price, you can put that at anything you like, but put that, don't put it at like hundred bucks and you're selling it for $9.95. That is just stupid. People don't fall for that. Some people do, however, but if you want to keep this and have that mass appeal product at which everybody can buy, I like to put my product at a reasonable price, which is the competitive price. And for images, you want to push the images that look the best. So. For your store, don't push images which have a dark background. You want to keep it simple. If you have a dark background, then you can use this product's design. But for your product page, you want to keep it simple and only use the product pictures which are have a white background. So it sinks in with your customers and they, it's easy on the eye and it looks universal. So your colors aren't all over the place. This is a, a problem which I see many people do. They just import all the freaking product images and it looks like sh Do, however, take these images and download them and you might be able to uh, edit them in your preferred image editing software to match your website so these looks good as well but i wouldn't use all of this but anyway don't write description here don't write any collections or anything like this because abrello does a pretty bad job at formatting your description correctly so import that to your store and push it immediately and once that is done we'll go into products here so as you can see i already imported my product this is how i like to design my uh, description so with ecom hunt you get a preset description it's it, it can sometimes be really good but sometimes it's pretty bad so you have to either hire someone to write a description for you or you can do that yourself now it's very easy you just take the best selling points of your uh, product and you just write about it write about how good that skincare is and what kind of ingre good ingredients is made of and how it's ecologic friendly and how it's shipped in a green eco-friendly process and all of that it's very important now what i like to do as well is i like to add a guaranteed checkout sign in the description now i don't do that i can't you can do this in the code as well so that happens on all the product images but since this is just a one or three product store we can add that in the description anyway so I have one here, you can just search on Google guaranteed safe checkout sign and you'll get a ton of different ones, but make sure it's clean, doesn't have a lot of colors and just make it easy on the eye so it looks good for everyone. Now make this a little bit smaller because you are optimizing for mobile and not desktop. This is the description that I will be using, but what I also like to include at the top after the guaranteed checkout sign is, I had a bullet list so I say. Free worldwide shipping, uh, eco friendly shipping, and easy returns and exchanges. Now, when people see this, they see free worldwide shipping, eco friendly ship. This is gonna be another one of your selling points, but easy returns and exchanges. Now, this was a little bit of a game changer for me because the, the more the person trusts that they can ship back this item if they don't like it, the more they're gonna buy simple as that this is always going to increase your conversion rate on your store no questions asked but anyway this video is dragging on for quite some time so save that and we'll watch the product page and this is how it looks this is something that i could sell like right now i could sell this we might make a video in the future where i just create a store as fast as possible or a live stream if you want a live stream of me creating a store and start selling on that store immediately just Give me a holla in the, the comments below and I'll see if we can set something up like that But that will be mostly when I have a little bit more subscribers So I know I'll have an audience watching how I set up my stores and I do that as fast as possible now This this page is looking very sexy and slick. It's 
doesn't include a ton of colors it's simple and the simpler it is the more you are going to sell and that looks good all right so jumping into the app section i like to include a lot of um, not too many apps don't install a ton of apps because that will slow down your website but there are some key apps that i like to download when on all of my stores one of those are gobot now what gobot is is probably one of a breakthrough for me really because it basically implements a bot on your website which will automatically answer any questions that your customer might have or they can check up their order via that bot or they can give you feedback you can implement your own questions so it, the customer can give feedback on any products that they might want to see in the future or any feedback on how you can improve your store like all of these analytics are incredibly important to have and gobot makes that very easy to do once you install gobot and you install that to your store you will be getting something like this that i'm showing on the screen now uh, I, i'm not really gonna set that bot up it's very easy and they set up all the most important aspects of that bot uh, from the start so you can just install it connect your store and it's up and running now what I like to do is always keep that uh, need help tab on the side of your store so it's not on below or on the top all right so next app that I like to install is SEO image optimizer by booster apps so what it does is it basically syncs all of your images on your store mostly product pictures and it adds an alt tag to those images so what the alt tag is, it's basically when you search on Google images and you search for a keyword basically, one of those images might be yours if you search for anti-wrinkle king for example. It will add my store name, the product, the product category and you can all choose what you want this to do but it's very easy to set up. You just install it, write what you want it to say on each of your products using the, the merge tags that it includes and you press on sync. Very easy. Don't be afraid to install it. Just install it. It's free and you don't have to pay for it. So uh, all the apps that I'm showing to you today is free apps. But there's one key app that I like to install on all of my stores. Now, I know what I said about keeping your product page simple. But Hurryfy has been upgraded and it's Hurryfy 2.0 now. It's not the old Hurryfy anymore. And you can make your countdown timer look crazy good like it looks amazing so on the screen right now i'll be showing you how my countdown timers look and it's very easy to set that up in the uh, app so just install the app and start to get familiar with the app and how you can basically set that up there are a ton of videos out there and i will probably make a video on how you can set up each of these apps or other apps uh, separately so they're kind of a mini guide if you find that I'm pretty unclear with some things in this video, you can always ask me in the description below. Next app that I like to use is Free Persistent Cart App. So what Free Persistent Cart App is, so it makes their, the customer's cart consistent and it saves that customer's cart across all their devices basically from that cookie or IP. I don't really know how it works, but it basically remembers your customer's cart on all their devices. And it's free, completely free. There is no downside with using this. So install that on your store. It's very important to have. One more thing I like to add is Cozy Anti Theft. So, what Cozy Anti Theft is, it's basically an app that protects your store from all right clicks or image saves and you can't open the inspect element you on your store so it completely disables right click and everything like that so nobody can steal your product photos or your slider images and stuff like that so very important to have well it's it's up to you really but i like to have this on my store so people who might be drop shipping and see my store as a competitor can't really steal all my uh, products because i like to do custom products via a personal drop shipping agent and that's how i like to do my drop shipping now what more i like to install is benchmark hero which is also free it's a free app and that basically benchmarks your uh, site and gives your site an audit and so shows you basically what you're lacking so it will show you that all right you don't have a facebook pixel installed you don't have google marketing installed you don't have your your site speed is quite slow your uh, title includes way too little keywords or your everything that you need to know about your store and what you can change 
is on this app and it's completely free. Great app to install, install it right now. And for all my apps, that is pretty much it. Like I keep it simple and that is how I sell. Like keeping it simple is key. Now I forgot to add two more apps, but one of these are paid and one more of these are is only free up to five orders. But this next app is very important to have. So that is Tractor. One of the best tracking apps for dropshipping, no questions asked. So I'll go and add this app and I'll show you how that looks and why it's so good. Now, this is how the plan looks for Tractor. So you have a free plan, completely free for your first five orders each month. That is great because five orders is everything that you need to be able to upgrade to their starter pack, which is 50 orders per month. And you'll basically just grow and grow and grow and Tractor will always be the best app for dropshipping. So do you use dropshipping services like Oberlo or Dropify? And yes, we do. And that is so good. This is why I don't use Aftership because Aftership is uh, it's very unreliable at times. It doesn't include all of these options, which I find is the most important ones and isn't really targeted towards dropshipping people. So what I like about this app is their dropship, their tracking page so you can just go into your online store and go down to navigation you can add your tracking page into your navigation go to the tracking page of anti wrinkle king and this is what it looks like can, do you see this this looks clean and if people see this when they they order you're set like they might be a, a recurring customer because they see it shows quality and it's just so clean so always use Tractor on your stores because Aftership ain't got nothing on this design. Uh, so you don't need to upgrade it or anything. But one thing I like to do, however, is add the color that I chose from my website here and just save that and you'll see that it's basically matches my website way more. And that is how I like to set up my store. So Tractor, one of my favorite free apps, uh, well paid apps eventually, but beginning it's free and it's just my favorite apps by far. Now one more app, which is however quite expensive. It's $49, but it's the best investment that you can basically do on your store. It's a really good app and that is orderly emails. Now what this is, it's free to install, but you need to pay 49 bucks and that is a one-time cost, but it's a great investment. It makes your emails, it will automatically take all the colors, fonts and everything from your store and add, use their magic designer here and it will automatically make an email for all your notifications, which are universal and looks clean. Here's the best thing. So view order status here. You can just go into, uh, you can't really see it here, but on the view order status, you can click that button and you can make it so that button always refers to your store's tractor app page. So this is where I like tractor and orderly emails. They combine so well together and it makes your store look a brand look like a branded store and it's clean all right that is so important clean and simple this order status button will go to your tractor page that is why these both emails are important but for a, a start when you're just starting out you don't really need to edit your notifications any anything at all and just keep it simple now for the beginning i don't even add mailchimp or anything like that there's no point in you starting to do email marketing in the beginning because once you have like 100 customers, that's when you can start doing email marketing or 50 customers actually, sorry about that. But 50 customers, then you start doing email marketing and that is for a whole new video because this video is dragging on quite some time now. And I know that you must be quite tired of hearing my boring monotone voice right now. 40 apps, that is all. You can see here, these are the apps that I like to use on my store. Uh, but that is basically all the apps that I use on my store. I don't really go with anything else. I like to keep it simple. Now you can add social proof and stuff like that, but don't overdo it. That, that, that is the worst outdated thing ever. It's old. It's old and people have seen it a thousand of times. And once they saw order and they ordered from one of those sites and they know that the shipping took them th three freaking weeks. They will be so put off and click down your store in pure anger by memories of that store. 
people have ruined that now some people do it on a very good in a good very good way but in your in the beginning of your dropshipping career you won't really be good at doing that so for big general stores that is great but for your beginning store keep it simple now one more app that i like to use i know i've been saying that a lot but i'm i'm, I'm quite tired and <laughs> This has been dragging on for a quite some time, but that is Luke's Reviews. They have a free trial, 14 free day free trial, but it's one of the most clean, simple, freaking review apps. And you can and you can also import AliExpress reviews via Luke's, or you can just take pictures from AliExpress, copy their review, and write it into your own website. So it looks like this, and it looks clean, and it will just increase increase your conversion rate by a lot. So always install Luke's and start writing your own reviews or import them. But also always have it as an option for your customers to write a review about your site. So after apps, it's time to set up your domain. Now for the domain, I always recommend Namecheap. Don't use GoDaddy because GoDaddy sells your, your information basically. So go with Namecheap, they're a trusted website and I'm, I'll leave a link in the description below. Pick a catchy website, basically you want your website name. The website store domain should always roll off your tongue so it's not hard to pronounce or hard to read and it's not so, so anti wrinkle king, it's, it's a pretty simple name and it's it, it, anti wrinkle king just rolls off your tongue, it's not hard to read that or check it out so go into namecheap register domain and then you go to online store domains and you go to transfer domain and it will start setting up an automatic process and transfer it from namecheap to shopify and that will now be your main domain very easy i think namecheap has like dot com domains for like three or four bucks it's very cheap so if you don't have the money to spend on a dot com domain uh Go and get some money from your parents or something like that because I, I, I think everybody has three or four or five dollars. If you don't, I don't really think you should get into dropshipping right now. But you can, however, set up your domain and start using my free method which I featured on my first video of all my videos where I go through how you can set up free influencer marketing strategy for completely free and you have influencers promoting your products for you just for a small percentage of a cut and how we also can send out emails in bulk and scrape Instagram influencers. Very simple and I totally recommend you to check that video out if you don't have a lot of money to put into ads and stuff like that. Now once you get once you're done with domain you want to set up your preferences and I would say that we were good from the bottom to the top but this was important to set up uh, a little bit later on in the stage of our website so for the homepage title anti wrinkle king the best skin skincare in the world free shipping something like that like don't think about it too much, but always structure your homepage title to look like this. Don't include free shipping, just come up with your best selling points and keep it under 30, 70 characters. For a homepage meta description, you want to include all the best selling points that you have to offer and include a lot of keywords so such as anti-wrinkle cream and stuff like that for my part, but for your product, you got to come up and do some keyword research. Just search on Google AdWords or something like that on which keywords are the best ones that people are searching for the most right now. So write a whole meta description that is 320 characters. Don't skip out on any characters used. And once that is done, we get into Google Analytics and Facebook Pixel. One of the most fun parts of having a store really and also one of the most easiest processes ever made so you want to go into google analytics with your gmail account that you set up in the beginning of this video and here you're basically going to uh, just input all the information that google is asking for and input your domain when you input your domain use https not http and follow all this you can just tick all of this if you want to and get your uh, tracking ID. Once you get your tracking ID, you'll get a code on top. You take that code and you go into your preferences. Let me see if I can find it. Here you go. And you paste that code right here. It should be quite long as well. So uh, I, I'm sorry if I didn't show you. If you have any questions about that, leave them in the comments below. I just want to keep this video a little bit shorter than it has to be. So for your Facebook pixel ID, you go into your Facebook ads manager 
and I already have my Facebook Ads Manager for this YouTube video set up. You go into your Ads Manager here, and you go to All Tools, and then you go to Pixels. If you don't have an ad account yet, set up one right now. It's very simple to do. I might make a video on how you set up everything of this from scratch. Uh, but today's uh, focus is on how to set up your store from scratch, not your Facebook ads manager from scratch. So you press create a pixel and name it to anything you want. And here again, use HTTPS, your store domain. So uh, antiwrinkleking.com. So this is just a test, but anyway, website URL, and there you go, you have set up a pixel, but you also need to implement this onto your website, and how we do that is just by using an integration or tag manager, press on Shopify, uh, continue, and then take this code that we find in our copy and paste your pixel ID section, we take that, copy that, and we take your our Facebook pixel ID and put that here. Very recommended to do this uh, before you start uh, showing this to anyone. Always have a Facebook Pixel ID installed, even when you start setting up your store. Now save that, and you can start sending traffic to that, send a test traffic. Now with Shopify, this uh, monitoring is quite slow, so you can just send test traffic and just press down. It will automatically show that it's installed once the traffic is registered or the event firing is registered. So Facebook Pixel is very important so you can create lookalike audiences and create audiences and track audiences uh, which are coming to your store and you can create ads and target all of those different kinds of people. Now th that is for another video. I haven't really gone through Facebook ads yet with you guys and I'm looking forward to do that. But here is the last thing of this video. Basically, you want to add your website to the Google Search Console. Now, what this basically is, is I'm, I'm going to add the My Shopify, but this should be your domain. I'm putting in my domain and I get this. So instead of doing this HTML file, I want to go to my HTML tag or Google Analytics so I can uh, just verify via that. So verify, you can verify via Google Analytics but right now it's not really showing because I didn't search, set up my Google Analytics. But once you set up Google Analytics, you will be able to use this one. But for now, I'm gonna use the HTML tag. And if, you, if your uh, Google Analytics failed, you can do it like this as well. So you go into themes, go into actions and go into edit code. Go into theme.liquid and in the header tag, which is here, you want to just copy and paste the verification code that you got from Google. Go into Search Console and verify it. So in Google Search Console, you can add your site map, which is very simple to find. It's just basically uh, your your store.com slash sitemap.xml. Uh, now it's not showing really, but once you have your domain, you can just write sitemap.xml and import that to your Google Search Console. This will make indexing of your store way easier and it's good for seo as well and it will basically put you in a priority list of uh, google crawling your website basically i know I, it all sounds very strange right now but once i go through seo with you guys in the next common videos we will be pros at that but this is just for you to uh, set up your store really easily now i won't be going through how you can sell on this store because you in my first video i show you how you can sell with a completely free method and in the future when you subscribe and put notifications on you will be the first people to know how i like how i like to sell from my store so that is snapchat ads uh, facebook ads instagram ads pinterest ads and I'm also gonna go through how I sell via SEO as well. But basically, that is everything you need to know about setting up a store. Now, I know this video was uh, really long, and I know that I missed out on a kind of lot of things as well. You might be a little bit confused, and if you are, please tell me in the comments below. I put a lot of time into this video, and I know it might be a little bit under par, but I just really wanted to get this out there because this process is really simple to get started with. All the best to you guys. I hope you liked this video. I will leave a link for Shopify trial and all the Google documents and all the templates and all of which, uh, all the things that I used in this video. You will be able to find that in the description below. 
subscribe and put your notifications on because I'm gonna be dropping a ton of value uh, which you might have seen already from my current videos. I hope you like this. Uh, if you have any questions about what happened in this video, write them down below and I'll clarify it for you and all the other people who had the exact same question. Thank you. This has been David Stone and have a wonderful day and set up your sword right now.